dearest like you, could we hear only about thought? Certainly, one of my recent schemes went awry thanks to an industrial accident involving Zod's processor. I had to work at Jigsaw to use his super disguise ability to pretend to be Apollo to infiltrate the Cape Canaveral Space Center, while Flight Face and Stallion held back with Zod, ready to strike when Jigsaw gave the word. Unfortunately, Matt soon realized Apollo was in fact my agent, due to him failing to remember a movie they had watched together. Jigsaw had to admit located his mission objective, the new space probe containing Unicon's new quantum supercomputer. Matt stealthily called the Guardians, while having General Newcastle take Apollo on a tour of the least interesting parts of the base. Jigsaw was you confided in me that it was getting harder and harder for him to maintain his cover and not start squishing the puny humans like the insects they are. Leader One, Turbo, and Highway arrived and tried to take Jigsaw into custody, with Turbo quipping that the jig is up, and Highway adding, Yes, we saw through your disguise. He called in his reinforcements rather than surrender, and the Guardians found themselves in a quite unexpected fight. Fright Face got hold of Newcastle and forced Leader One to divulge to the location of the probe which he reluctantly did. He ordered Stallion to grab it, but before he could, Zod sunk his metal teeth right into it, and there was a huge electrical surge. When the dust settled, Zod loomed over the battlefield. Jigsaw tentatively asked Zod, Are you okay, boy? Zod narrowed his eyes, and in a rather refined British accent replied, I have never felt better in my entire life, my dear chap. Stallion and Frightface looked to each other and decided that they had better report back to me, and Zod deigned to accompany them. The guardians were left scratching their collective heads. At first I was delighted with Zod's newfound mental prowess. He had always been my most potent weapon, limited only by his animalistic intellect. Copter told me that he had a bad feeling about the whole situation, but I brushed him off. After all, this is Copter we're talking about. I decreed an attack on the command center dry dock in the Procyon system, where the Guardian space fleet was undergoing repairs following the drumming I had given them upon my return to level 1. I would lead the diversion. Zod would lead the main attack. The attack went well, with Copter, Crasher, Breeze, and I drawing a large portion of the Guardian forces. When Zod and his attendant Thruster arrived, the Guardians found themselves outflanked and had little choice but to fall back, giving me control of a third of their fleet. I returned to Rogue Star and left Zod in charge of completing the repairs on the command centers. With so much of the Guardian fleet under my command, we would soon be able to crush the Guardians once and for all. What I hadn't anticipated was Zod's betrayal, left alone with just a token force of Renegade. He soon browbeat them into compliance, and announced to them his intention to lure fights for Gunner and I onto the first of the repaired command centers and blow it up. He didn't realize that the Guardian tailpipe had been knocked out during the fight and overheard the whole thing. He slipped into the communication deck of the dry dock, lured Zigzag away, and sent a coded message to Leader One detailing Zod's plans. Rather than do the sensible thing and allow Zod to eliminate the renegade leadership once and for all, Leader One foolishly decided to warn me. The devil we know logic, I suppose. I didn't believe him. In fact, I laughed in his face and went with Gunner and Fightor to the command center that had just docked with Rogue Star. Believe it or not, what was left of Leader One's fleet arrived at that moment and initiated an attack on Rogue Star. Tailpipe, it seems, had sent him our coordinates. A stray blast hit the command center that Zod had sent, and it exploded magnificently. I realized that Nitwit had been telling me the truth. I sent a message to Leader One, 
telling him to call off the attack. We had a bigger threat to face. He accepted by ceasefire, on the condition that the Tridon goes back to Guardian hands. I reluctantly agreed, wanting to eliminate the cancer of Zod before it grew. The renegade and guardian fleets arrived at the Procyon docks together. Zod launched every renegade he had under his command in half-repaired command centers. They were outnumbered six to one, and I gave a stern broadcast offering amnesty to any who would return to the fold immediately. Predictably, they all did. Zod, isolated and alone, Prepare to initiate the base's self-destruct mechanism and wipe out all guardians and renegades together. I believe he was quoting Melville at the time. But, armed with the knowledge of his precise location from the guardian's inside man, Leader One and I astro-beamed inside and blasted the self-destruct mechanism. It was close enough to Zod that he got hit with the entire blast. As we readied ourselves to continue the combat, he looked up with blank, uncomprehending eyes and roared. Zod was back. I ordered him to blast Leader One, but Tailpipe had anticipated my betrayal and vented the chamber into space, sucking Zod and I out. Leader One's force field made him large enough to avoid getting sucked out. He congratulated Tailpipe on his quick thinking and remarked that apparently the only minions who would willingly serve me are utterly mindless, which Tailpipe thought was quite amusing. As for Zod and I, Copter picked us up in a thruster, and Phytor ordered a withdrawal. We had lost the docks and needed time to repair and regroup. I vowed that I would get Litter One, even if it took a hundred years and Zod gave a mighty roar of agreement.